We will start this meeting with our newly elected sheriff, and if any of you have questions for him, his microphone is up here. If you'd like to sit up here, you can. Oh, I've been loud. You won't have any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Karen, you want to? Karen? Mm -hmm. Diane? Oh. Sorry, wrong one. You want to get in the overseer's chair, please? Which one's that? Right between the. Oh, yes. Just, just to show you where the officers sit and who the officers are. So, and we're always looking for and welcoming new members at any time. But right now, I'll turn it over to the newly elected sheriff and let him tell us what he's going to do with the sheriff's department with our help. Hey, I'd like to introduce my dog. She's got a rabbit. <laughs> well, my name's George Conatoys. I'm uh, everybody wants to know when I'm 73. I'm born and raised in Colchester, Vermont, native Vermonter. I uh, attended Rice High School in South Burlington. Uh, I graduated from St. Michael's College in 1972. And I, yeah, dog, you can have that one. <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I went into the state police in 1972, and I remained there till 2000. Um, from there, I joined the sheriff's department under a previous sheriff, under I think it was Sam Franks. It's been quite a while ago, and I've been there ever since. And so I've got a 51-year career. My wife thinks I'm crazy. She is. Uh, she's staying in Arizona at our winter home all winter long. And so this is the first year I've been without my wife in 47 years. So I'm a little weird. Uh, there have been so many rumors that have been uh, passed around. It, it's just, it's, uh, it's really debilitating because some of the rumors are really vicious. I was just mentioning to a friend over here that today I, I heard that I had stolen the, the uh, fingerprint machine from Randolph PD. Well, first off, I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware that there is no Randolph PD, uh, and, and that we did order two fingerprint machines, one for our Chelsea office and one for our Randolph office. And neither one of these devices have been shipped, nor I don't even think they've been built yet. So th the fact that uh, we weren't going to order two of them, there's no sense in ordering uh, you know, the, the county ordering one for Randolph PD, so we canceled one. But apparently that turned into, I went down and stole one out of their office. So that's the kind of thing that is really, it, it just saddens you to hear that kind of stuff. And that came as far away as, well, my son picked up that rumor in Newberry today. <laughs> so, you know, things they're traveling around, it's just absolutely insane. But uh, Steve asked me to come, and you know everybody knows Steve. I can see he's got the fancy belt and everything. Um, and I promised him that I would let I would tell you anything that you wanted to know, frankly and straight up, and with with a great deal of honesty. So you won't have any any questions whatsoever that will not be answered tonight. Some of them may not be pleasant for me, uh, but I assure you, you'll get exactly what you ask for this evening. Ask. <laughs> yes, ma'am. How about the dispatcher situation? That is a, that's in horrible shape. Uh, what we've had to do is pay Lamoille County to dispatch for us. Now, what I mean by dispatch, they're basically answering the phone, and when you call them, they'll, they'll say, I don't know what they'll say, quite frankly, but uh, they do all our dispatching. So if our man that's on the road doing contract work, he has someone to uh, get information from. And so Lamoille charges us about $2,000 a month for that service, which, which when you think of, it's really not bad for, for one reason. One is it, it might be cheaper than having our own dispatcher because if you pay a dispatcher for a month's wages, it's certainly going to be over $2,000. So we have that. But what you're missing is when they dial down there, they're not getting anybody from Chelsea. So how are they supposed to... Uh, how are they supposed to know anything about Chelsea? How are they supposed to answer any complaints? And, uh, you know, we've become basically a, an eight-hour department. We're just like Washington County. Washington County is the same thing. They, their, their department uh, is strictly an eight-hour, but they have a dispatcher. We, unfortunately, don't. 
We're trying to hire a dispatcher, but it's not, it's, it is not easy because there's so many federal um, stipulations to being a certified uh, dispatcher because of all the federal equipment inside. The NCIC, the APHIS, all these machines we have to sign for. They have to go through criminal record checks. They have to take a test yearly. They are considered uh, grades one, two, and three, depending on what they can do. Very, very involved. So when, when well-meaning well -milling, well people call and say, we want to help, we want to help. How can we help you? I can be a dispatcher. Well, it's not all easy to just to be a dispatcher. It's not, not like a, uh, a, a taxi cab company saying, car 23, go to 23 Avenue, da 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 da. It's, it's not that way. It's, it's, uh, it's quite harrowing to be a dispatcher. You got two or three lines, people are calling you. You got an officer on the road who's calling you. You're trying to run an NCIC form before he even asks for it. You're asked for triple I's nationwide. You have to run 50 states. It is not an easy job. And the fact of the matter is, we pay peanuts, peanuts for a dispatcher. So, as a result of that, what do you get when you buy peanuts? <laughs> you get a lot of shells. So we have, to, we have to be very careful who we hire, and it, it, it is not an easy job. It is not an easy job, and do we, are we trying to hire one? Yes, we are. We're trying to hire one, no question about it. And uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be halfway there in a few weeks. By halfway, I mean, we're training one girl right now. I say girl, forgive me. We're, tra we're traveling one lady. I got in trouble at the academy. I used to teach at the academy. And whenever I said girl, it'd be hair would come right up. Anyway, uh, we have one girl that we're training. And uh, right now she's at the administrative building, which is another topic we'll talk about. Uh, she's at the administrative building and we're, we're gonna be training here to do fingerprints, which is uh, something we really need because we've got people day in and day out calling and wanting to set up an appointment for fingerprints. And fingerprints are, are, are not only are they important for you, but they're important for us because you know, we, get, we get dollars from fingerprinting. Every time we, we fingerprint somebody, we make some money. And a lot of people aren't aware of this, but the county gives us nada for the officers, nada. The only way we get income to pay the officers on the road is in, is in the contract system. We have to contract with towns. If we don't have towns, we don't have police officers. The only two police officers in our, in our office right now is, uh, uh, well, I shouldn't say now because he's gone now. We had a transportation officer, which the state paid for, and they pay for the sheriff. Those are the only two incomes that come from outside the department. And the transportation officer failed to do transportations. And what happened was the state took away that position. That took 46,000 bucks right out of my budget in a second, just like that. They call up, said, can't do it anymore, we're taking a position. $46,000 cut right off. And it was, it was a shame because not only do we need that money, but I mean, we, we wanted those transports. Because transports included mental health, uh, and it, uh, it, it, it was a lot of things. And it was just a terrible loss. And I hated to do that, but uh, it happened to me about a month and a half ago. So. Is that person. Uh, I'm sorry? Is that. Is the transport officer somebody who transports from the jails? To yes. The, uh, I was doing most of the transports. Uh, you know, I was familiar with where the correctional centers were and where the mental health centers were. And I was forever going back and forth from Newport or down to Springfield or down to the, the, the Bennington Hospital down there for the you know, mentally ill. So I, I was continually doing them and, and I, had, I had no idea that there was such a thing as a transport officer to begin with. I was just oblivious because I'd been in court for the last 21 years. I mean, that, that was when Sam Franks hired me back when, when I retired, I had just come back from uh, my, my final of five spinal fusions. Five spinal fusions. I had a broken neck and, and anterior and posterior surgeries and neck surgeries. Anyway, uh, when I came back, I said, listen, I don't want to wrestle any more drunks. And he said, well, how about doing the court for me? I said, I'd be great. You know, I'd be great. So I went into the court, and uh, he promised me I wouldn't have to do anything else. Well, he kind of broke his promise somewhat. But anyway, uh, that's, that's where I've basically been. So I've been, for the most part, I've been secreted from the rest of the rest of the police, rest of the officers there. The only time they'd ever see me is when they came to court or you know, they came to bring some paperwork or, or bring somebody, you know, whatever. So, and, and, and that was kind of a bad thing for me and, and we, we can explain that with some of the other questions, I'm sure. Does it, did that answer your question at all? Yeah, I'm kind of curious though that you said the state decided that Orange County doesn't need that anymore? 
Uh, I'm sorry, what? The state decided that Orange County doesn't need a transport officer? No, it's not that they don't need one. It's that they're not going to have one because we screwed up. We should, we should have been doing those transportations on a regular basis. Oh. They would call and the transportation officer would say, well, how about you, George? Do you want to take that? Said, I don't care, so I'll take it. So that's pretty much how it went. And he, he was, he, I'm not saying he wasn't a busy man. Uh, the fact of the matter is no matter what he was doing as a transportation officer, you were supposed to stop. If you were, if you were doing paperwork or doing anything, you stop and you go do your transportation. That's what they're paying you all that money for, transportation. And that's not what was happening. As a result of that, poof, that went. Again, yes? Can we get it back? Well, I've been asking uh, the uh, uh, state's attorney and sheriffs, uh, uh, that they have an office in Montpelier, and they kind of bargain for us. And I've been asking for it, but the fact of the matter is we're so lean on personnel, I mean, I don't think we could do it, quite frankly. I don't think we could do it. To get back to the original question, if I got on line one one. Who do you get? Colchester? No. Well, you might. You might. Yeah. Uh, because that's the, that's the biggest, we call a PSAP. That's the biggest PSAP we have. So if, if for instance, we're supposed to be uh, dispatched by Lamoille County, by uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Marku. And uh, if, if his man doesn't pick up the phone quick enough, it may shift directly over to the, the nearest PSAP, which is Colchester. That's good and that's bad. It's good because the, the complaint is heard and someone is eventually going to get there. And who will respond? I'm just saying, no. eventually get there. See, that problem is when a dispatcher is sitting in Colchester and dispatches for, for something over here on Podunk, da da. It's pretty hard. I mean, it's been made easier over the years because now we have these numbers on every house and, and it's located in your GPS, so it's a little bit easier. But the ideal scenario is to have a dispatcher in your own area like Chelsea. And unfortunately, we don't have one. So who will be dispatched? State police. Whenever, whenever uh, there's no other uh, avenue, it's the state police. And trust me, they're not exactly happy to go anywhere. And it's very difficult. They won't take complaints. Um, they'll, they'll try like the Dickens to avoid to come out. And it's really a sad scenario because, for instance, I, I was up on 113 on the pike detail. Everybody knows about that miserable pike detail up and down 113. I spent days up on that road. And one day, I heard that there was an armed robbery going on at the old, not the old folks' home, but uh, on the other side of the, the store in the middle of town, there's a, a bunch of units up there for, for well, older folks. Senior Emily, court. what's the name of that? Yeah. yeah, the court, right. Arm robbery going on up there. Now, here I am, way up on 113, and we couldn't find anybody. Nobody could come because I was stuck on a detail following a paver. Now, if I left that paver and anybody struck any of the people out there, hit the paver or anything, I would be hosed. So I can't move. So they were trying to find somebody in the area, couldn't find anybody in the area. So after about 15 minutes or so, uh, state police finally had somebody over there. Turns out it wasn't an armed robbery, it was something altogether different. But uh, it just goes to show you that if we haven't got anybody close by, it's really perilous. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, so <clears throat> you, you've really touched a lot on, on the problems that we have with lack of of personnel, and of course, we've all read in the paper about all the people who have resigned. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure I'm asking you to necessarily delve into the reasons why. Uh -huh, sure. I guess my bigger question is when that we were down to very few people in the sheriff's office, and that number of people have left three. I guess my question to you is how do, well. There's a reason why people did that. Yes. I have no idea what it is. Well, you may not believe but, it, but, but I, let me finish. Sure. But what I'd like to hear from you is how you feel, what you think happened, and and how you plan to move forward so that that many people or whatever you think we need can come back and work. In the, in the, uh, well, I doubt very seriously that anybody that left will be coming back. It doesn't matter. I just mean um, but how yes. do you encourage people. And I guess the other question is, do we need all those 17? And is there no. the funding for it? No, we don't, we don't need seven, 17 people. Seven would be more than adequate if I could get seven. So let's go back to why they all left. Uh, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a long story. Uh, I've been called the Antichrist. I'm not exactly sure why. but. Uh, it was alleged that I was going to fire everybody and drop all the contracts and 
uh, we'd start a whole new fresh department, which is about as far from the truth as, as could possibly be. After the election, uh, I was in Arizona. Right after deer season, I brought my wife to our home in Arizona to get her set up for the winter. And while I was there, uh, the, the, the sheriff had some difficulty with the court in, in uh, Rutland, in the federal court in Rutland, and with the academy. And during that, during that time period, everything was very quiet. It was like uh, a week, two weeks where we didn't know where the sheriff was. It, certainly, I didn't know where the sheriff was, and I was in Arizona. And, and uh, the deputies were sending me messages on my Gmail saying, you know, we know you're now the new elected sheriff, but uh, where are you? What are you doing? Well, unbeknownst to them that I had made a gentleman's agreement with another sheriff and the existing sheriff that I would not have anything to do with the department until he was done. And that, that came from... I think the end of it was I sent a Christmas letter to everybody, wishing them, wishing them well for their family and a good future for the department. And right after that letter went out in Gmail is when the sheriff called me and said, listen, I made a gentleman's agreement that you're not gonna do anything and he's taken away your, your mail privilege, privileges. So you can't co contact anybody. Well, what that amounted to was most of the deputies down there felt that I could have cared less and when they did send me something, all I could respond was, I can't respond to you. Because I'd made a gentleman's agreement with, this, with the sheriff. And so I think I lost a lot of faith with these guys, or gals that were there too. And then there were the, all these rumors that were flying around that I was gonna do this and I was gonna do that. Uh, it, was, it was just absolutely crazy, but I, I just kept my mouth shut. And I was accused in the paper, or I think it was in one of the papers that I had tried to abscond with the sheriff's department before the sheriff was done with the department. So, you know, that's, that's a little bit about, about why they quit, because they thought that I was going to fire them all, which is absolutely, I mean, that's just an untruth. And I don't know where it started. I have no idea, nor do I care. And I, when they started to drop off, I, I really thought I could stop the hemorrhaging. I, I, I contacted them. I talked to them individually. I tried everything. Uh, but they were convinced, they were convinced that uh, I was the Antichrist and that everything was just going to be, uh, you know, just it would be gone and they should be seeking other jobs. I, I wrote to the dispatchers, I, I, I literally begged them, literally begged the dispatchers. Because a couple of things you can't live with or live without. You can't live without a dispatcher and you can't live without an accountant. And my entire clerical staff decided to up and leave too. They, they headed for the bunker. So here I was six months ago thinking that this was a, a real viable department because, I, of course, I was on the outside. I was working court. Everybody was smiling and happy. Everything seemed Jim dandy. And then I get in, and then I, I, I start looking. I get an opportunity to look at the QuickBooks at our, our accounting system. And I find out that we are in palliative care. We're ready to die. We had almost nothing in our bank. And I'm thinking, how am I going to make payroll? I've still got, I still at the time, I think I had about five people. And I'm thinking to myself, how am I going to make payroll? So I, I'm, I'm, I'm calling everybody. This is tax time. Try to find an accountant to do anything for you right now. It's, it's virtually impossible. So I was just, I was beside myself thinking, am I going to be writing checks? How am I going to do it? I don't even know how to debit. You know what I mean? I, I can't use QuickBooks. Anybody here use QuickBooks? It is a monster. There's a man right there. It's a monster, and he'll tell you about it. It's a monster. Well, just for the grace of God, I found this woman over here that lived no more than a couple miles up the road. And, and she said, well, I'll come down and take a look and see, see what I can do for you. And I thought, well, you know. This is really good. And she came right down, sat right down at the terminal, opened it right up and started playing in QuickBooks. So I went, oh. but now she's not going to want to do it. But she did want to do it. She's been with us now for the last three weeks. She has been a godsend. We have saved more money with her being uh, uh, equipped to run that QuickBooks. I mean saved money for the county by finding things that were left behind, bills that were staggered up, all kinds of things. So we've been working daily together. We'll lay out the bills on a table. And right now, it's, it's a matter of deciding what bills we can pay, what bills we can't pay. 
So we're trying to keep the heat and the electricity on, and we're trying to keep the contracts going with one man going. So uh, we depend on contracts, and we depend on these people. And they're hard to find. We've been advertising, but a lot of people don't realize it's difficult. You just can't walk in and be a deputy. We've got to send you off to school. And even if we send you off to the shortest school there is, which is two weeks, we can send you off for two weeks. But after two weeks, you can do virtually nothing except ride with somebody. That's about what it comes out to. So in order to, in order to, to get to a higher category where you can carry a firearm and, and be out uh, by yourself, it takes weeks in the academy. And the academy is not cheap, and nor do they pay for The state doesn't pay for it. We have a very small training budget, and it doesn't include that kind of money. So I guess the-, the Keep right on, because I just talk all night. Uh, and, and maybe Bob wants to ask it, but I'm curious about where you're going from here. Sounds like seven is what you think is the- I would love seven. I hired one today, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, um, a, a police officer from, yes. I'm Bob Childs, for those that don't know me. Uh, been almost a 68 year resident of Orange County. And 63, four years of those are here in Chelsea. And I moved south for the winter. I'm in Dumbridge now. Um, <laughs> it is, it is better down there. <laughs> and in that time, you're the seventh sheriff I've seen. Yeah. And in all of that time, up until Bonyak became sheriff, you could pick up the phone, call the sheriff's department, almost anywhere in this county, mm -hmm. and somebody responded. Right. And I mean, it, yeah. it took whatever drive time, but somebody responded. Right. Well, I've, I've well, 15 years, I was a supervisor for AOT in this county. I called Orange County Sheriff's Office. I don't know how many times for assistance on 113 or on the interstate or here on Route 110, because those were areas I covered. Nada, nothing. Mm -hmm. I was told, oh, we don't have a contract with that town. Oh, we don't have anybody available. One of the reasons I think you got elected is because people were sick with it. They want some response. And I guess I've got to agree with you. Kate. We don't need, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kate. Um, right. <laughs> I don't think we need to hear about all of the problems that you inherited. Mm -hmm. What we need to hear from you is. Don't give me a problem. Give me an answer. Small. Well, I'm trying to give you an answer, and that is it's extremely difficult to hire anybody. I've been in the paper, uh, I've got, I put ads in the world. Uh, uh, we're, we're trying. We're trying to get people everywhere, but like I said, they have to have some sort of certification to walk in and, and, and be a deputy. It's not, like I said, you just can't walk in and you know, put a uniform on and on you go. I hired one today. He'd, he'd been a Barry police officer for about 30 years, and he retired, and uh, he got bored. And so uh, I hired him to work in the court. He's just elated with that. And so that takes the strain off us somewhat in that that means that uh, my guy on the road, my single guy on the road right now, is less strapped. In other words, what, what's happening right now is you, you have a contract in Chelsea. So he'll, he'll work Chelsea for two hours. Then from there, he'll scoot over to Trafford, Stratford, where we get a, a contract over there. So he'll do two hours over there. And then he'll go to Corinth. And then he'll put a couple hours in Corinth. So he runs around the whole county. So everybody sees him. And that's the best way I can think of doing it right now. Because we only have one guy, one guy for the road. The other two guys are one that lives in Orleans, Vermont. And he's my number two man. And he's, he's either uh, working in the area on paperwork. Uh, he's an older gentleman like myself doing paperwork or trying to hire people or doing administrative work, all kinds of things like that, and myself doing the same thing. So that, that, that's the whole department. That's the whole department. It's a, it's a sad thing to say. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. But, but that's what I don't understand. You're talking about being strapped for cash. No, oh, yeah. Yet you have all these contracts with all the towns who are still paying you. Right. Not Randolph. I know they're right. out. Right. But Randolph so, was our biggest contract. I understand. Yeah. But still, you've got more than one person more than enough cash coming in to support more than one person. You, you do, but the only trouble is it's paying more than one person. It's paying everybody that's, that's working in the department. 
in one way or another. Now, some of the contracts, are, in fact, most of the contracts are uh, less than like $15,000. I'm not sure. I, don't, I didn't look at Chelsea's. I'm not sure how much Chelsea was. I think I figured Chelsea's four hours a week, 16 hours. You can multiply 16 by 45 hours, which is what they charge for a man in a car. So Chelsea doesn't have a big contract. Uh, nobody has a big contract. Nobody with the exception of Randolph. And so on the 15th of the month when we send out our invoices to these different counties, we're still servicing those counties with the number of, of hours that they require. But I got one man running ragged doing it. So you, with one person. That's right. I got one person on the road. And the question, I have a follow-up question mm -hmm. is, if you have one person doing that, yep. what were all the 17 people doing before? Well, there wasn't that many. I thought you just said there were 17. No, no, somebody else said it was 17. I, I would say that uh, on the outside, uh, our biggest that I can remember was probably eight, probably eight people. And remember now, during the course of a week, you got you got a couple of people on days off. You got people working days, and you got people working nights. So you, you know your shift dwindles very quickly when it's when you're thinking of that in terms of vacation time, uh, weekends, you know all, all these different things. So seven people is is really <clears throat> kind of cutting it pretty pretty close to the line. I think the bulk of them were part time people that came in for Tumbridge Fair and whenever Ex they exactly security and things Ex like that. Exactly, we 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 bring in but everybody we can find. They were available. That's, At one time, that's true. there were 32 deputies <coughs> assigned to that jail. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. And, and not all of them working, all of them yeah. fully employed, but on the list as working deputies. So, and even though, like you said, Bob, you call expecting a response, mm -hmm. you can get one, You're and right. then you think, there are 32 deputies, what's going on? Here? Well, I can tell you, there is not 32 deputies. Yeah. And I, that's, a, that's a terrible thing. When I was working out of Middlesex or even working drugs and stuff like that, we always had enough people to cover for anything. I mean, when I first came on in 1972, I think our night shift had, in Middlesex, our night shift probably had six people in a night shift. We would fight for complaints. We would fight for complaints out of the Middlesex office. And now, Middlesex is down to almost nothing, too, because they're having difficulty hiring, despite the fact that they have a really good pay incentive. I don't have a very good pay incentive. So how do you, how, how can I compete? Before yesterday, 45 minute response time to firearms. That's that's a scary thing. In Moylton. Yeah. 45 minutes. They got to come to Chelsea. And it's an hour. Yeah. I I can't. I'm not. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I just, I'm, you want to know the truth, and that's the truth. Well, I think that's what we're saying. We, yeah. we want a sheriff that's going to tell us. Well, I, I'm not telling you. Just going to sit down, write up a plan, make sure that plan works. Well, <laughs> my plan is to hire more people than it has been. But, well, uh, how are you going to hire them if you don't have the contracts to pay them? Oh, well, right now, right now, 90% of our contracts don't expire till July. <coughs> Most of our contracts usually end, in, I think they're in July. So, you know, we have, we have still some months to go. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful uh, that we can get at least a couple more people. But it's difficult because everybody, have you noticed since COVID happened that there's a sign everywhere is we're hiring? And it's the same way with law enforcement across the whole country. They're all hiring, but nobody is nobody is is working. I don't, I, I, I don't know why they don't. They're getting everything for free. Well, that that may be that may be what's happening. I'm, I'm not going to blame our, our government. I'm I'm what you call apolitical. But the the fact of the matter is, McDonald's is paying uh, you know just about the same wage I'm paying. Most of my deputies are make, are starting at about twenty two dollars an hour, which is which is okay. I, I mean when I started I. As a trooper, I was making three dollars and twenty-six cents an hour. Yeah, I was making one hundred and seventeen bucks for all the overtime you could go for two weeks. My wife and I were living on Roman noodles. What do you call it? Roman noodles? Uh, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, we and it, it's a different world today than what it was thirty or forty years ago. It's a different world. It's hard to find people who are who are you know geared to work. It's just hard to find people. Hi. 
I live in Randolph Center. Mm -hmm. I don't live in Randolph proper. Right. I live in Orange County. Mm -hmm. Do I get any patrol? Mm -hmm. Nothing. I have no coverage anywhere, not even from the Randolph. Well, you know, I, I, I think... Uh, so who do I call? What do I get? Well, when... when Fire you, department? Yeah. See, I don't know what Randolph has set up over there. Well, I don't think we were even covered by Randolph, because we're us, the Randolph Center. Oh, if you're up in the center, then you're covered You're covered by us. By Orange County. Right. But, but if, if we don't have anybody on, or... Uh, the, the, the sole guy that's out there wandering around is over in Stratford. It's going to be some time before he gets there. So, so, so generally the speaking... So come first? That's it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, an, an emergency comes first. Yeah. If that's an emergency, that's an emergency. But bear in mind, Stratford's a long way from... I know it is. ...from the school or whatever, you know what I mean? Right. So, you know, that's, that's the fact of the matter. But usually, if, if there's an emergency, then and Royalton, the state police in Royalton would be there. Just like they came to Washington that day when, when we couldn't find anybody, you know, they came along. So yeah. the dispatcher takes care of all of that? Yeah, oh yeah. But the dispatcher, as I said. That's way up in yeah. yeah. Wow, we're in Hyde Park. sort of a sorry state of affairs. It is. So, so this is like a, a cafeteria. You, you get paid, it's almost like a cafeteria thing where one town says, I'm going to pay you to do this certain thing, and maybe it's write traffic tickets if you're one of those notorious towns. Now, I'll, I'll tell you how I got in serious trouble uh, before, before the election, and uh, I thought it was, uh, was going to be devastating. And they asked me what I, what I thought that I could do with this problem you're talking about. And I said, well, what I wanted to do was to split the county in half down on 110, on the west side and on the east side, and have two people assigned to each one of those, <coughs> each one of those sides. And um, I, I thought it was a grand idea because it's more community policing. If you had two guys that everybody knew that were working their area, and, and I wanted them to stop at gasoline stations and stores. I wanted them to stop at kids' Kool-Aid stands. I wanted them to stop at people who mowing lawns. I want people to know who the deputies were working their area. I wanted them to stay in that area. But I kept, apparently that was the, the, the kiss of death compare, at a, from other people. It was a kiss of death. And, and I heard all about it. No, you can't change anything. You, da, 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 da. So I said, well, OK, OK. And that's the way that went. I did. I did try to have a. a, a the town doesn't, in my understanding, like the town doesn't pay you to do general calls, and you can't really do that. There's no budget. You're not getting, yeah, but see, that's what that's what irritated the hierarchy, and that is, if you were in a contract town yeah. and you got a problem, and I got a man there, does it make any sense for my man not to stop there just because you're not paying us? Of course not. It's ridiculous. Right. You should go to your place. You should handle your complaint. And 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 uh -uh. even the dispatchers before were saying no, we that, that is one of the problems. And you get no no state funding. This is totally the only state funding we get are the two officers, myself yep. and the transportation officer was kaput. So that you know but uh, I, I just thought that was a great idea. One side of the county, the other side of the county. So you had two men working there. Everybody knew their towns. They knew every dirt road. When somebody said they were on such and such a road, they didn't have to go to the GPS to find it. They knew the road. The same for you know both sides of the county. I thought it would be a better service with the same amount of people, but eh, eh, they didn't like that idea. Are you saying that? I mean, what, who, who didn't like that idea? And are you are you saying that you wanted to serve every town in Orange County? I did because you know what I was thinking of doing. I wanted to get together with all the towns and have almost like a cooperative. Mm -hmm. if, if I know my budget is X number of thousand dollars and I got five, five towns together and said, hey look, I know some of you are contracts, some of you are not contract, but let's see, well, I think we can make this cheaper for everybody. I think we can make a better, a better community policing system if we do it this way. That's, that was my impetus. That's what I'd hope to do. And I think, I think that small towns that really couldn't afford it would jump in on something like that. I mean, if it's not affecting you like it would have been, for instance, in Randolph. They're looking, what were they looking for, $700,000 or something like that? I mean, that's going to jump your tax bill $100, $150, or whatever. I'm, I'm not a Cal. And I guess I'm going to go right back to the hard question. Yeah, what are you doing today? Yeah. Well, right now, like I said, I hired one today, and he's going to be going into court starting Wednesday. 
And as soon as he's trained, it's gonna, it's gonna take some of the pressure off my one guy. Hopefully, hopefully I have another guy that's gonna be coming out of the service, living over in, in, uh, in the Corinth area. And as soon as he's discharged, he's fully, he's fully ready to go. But if he hit the ground, he can take right off. So I'm hoping, and, and he, he's waiting for a discharge. So it, it, that should happen, I'm hoping, before, before springtime or, well, of course, do we ever have a spring here in Vermont? We go from winter to mud to winter. But, you know, uh, that's what I'm hoping for. But people know. People know exactly what we're paying. And also people know from listening to some of the other deputies that uh, it's Contois, he's the Antichrist. You know, something's going to happen if you get over there. Well, I can tell you, the people that work for me now, I trust indefinitely. I mean, I know what they're going to be 10 years from now. And these are solid, good police officers. I've known them for a long time. They're, they're, they're decent, hardworking people. And they're hard to find. They're hard to find. Yes, ma'am. Hi, Linda Engel, I'm director of Safe Line, which is domestic violence. And we know each other. Sexual abuse, good. Much of our work has been with the Special Investigations yes. Unit. My question is, what are your plans looking forward for the Special Investigations Unit for interviewing any child or adult who has been sexually abused or mm -hmm. sexually assaulted? Well, you've probably heard what happened to our SIU. Could we, you describe what has happened? I don't want to go by any rumors. Okay, well, what happened was people got assigned to the SIU that weren't qualified to be in the SRU. And the academy, police academy, found out about that, and there was troubles in the upper echelon. He ended up going before the police academy down in Rutland over that issue. So basically, the SIU was closed down because the only two people that were there were mine. One went in the service, and the other one just, she quit. And now I'm, I'm sitting on an empty SIU office, and uh, we don't have anybody that, would, that is, first off, qualified. For, well, I do. I shouldn't say that. We have one person that's qualified to work in SIU, doesn't want to work in SIU. It's not everybody that wants to work in child offenses. Not everybody. And so basically, the SIU has now gone kaput. And what's happening right now is uh, they're offering it to different sheriff's departments to see if they'll fund it, to see if there's, you know, if they want to put a man in there. And most of the people, most of the sheriffs I know, are either poaching deputies from other departments or are slim, like myself. Now, some of the people that left me got poached by other departments because they offered them more money. The tr trouble is, I, I can't give more money if I don't have more money. And I, I inherited some terrible bills. Terrible. So if a child is going to be interviewed, how will that happen? It has to go to the state police, have an S still, still are using SIU. They have a, it's just not in our building here in Chelsea. But the state still does have an SIU unit. And so it would be directed to that unit. Do you hope to bring that back to Chelsea? Here again, it's, it's the personnel problem. Can I get? Can I get? Can I get one person that's willing to do that? I, I, well, you know, remember Carrie? Carrie was working there for quite a while, and she was really she was really good at it. So anyway, uh, when she got done, you know, I called her. I called her at least at least twice, maybe three times, and and you know, short of sending her a dozen roses, she 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 just didn't want to. Just didn't want to do it anymore. Now, the other day, I heard a rumor from, it's a rumor, I heard it from another sheriff that she was thinking about SIU again, but not with Chelsea, somebody else. Because they, they, they did have some serious problems with some uh, supervisory issues there at SIU. I'm gonna throw that in there too. They had some serious problems there and that, that, that didn't, help, didn't help her <laughs> or Chelsea before her. So that's all I can say about that. I wish it was there. I mean, it's, you know, I am, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right, right now, I, I am trying to unload that building. I talked to Dave Savage as late as today. And I'd like to sell that building because it is costing us more than we're certainly getting in that building. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a deficit for us. And so what we intend on doing and intend on doing shortly is moving our business back 
to the Chelsea jail for a couple of reasons. One is, we'll be able to have someone that answers the phone, da-da. Here's one of the answers that we've been fighting for. And once we do the bug out and get over to the jail, we'll have somebody answering the phone and it won't, it won't be, at least it'll be eight hours, it won't be, hi, and this is you know, Hyde Park answering, how can I help you, you know? That sort of thing. So we're, we're, we're trying to uh, work within our small budget. We're trying to stay alive at the same time. But as I said, when I, when I started, I inherited huge, and I'm not talking small, I'm talking huge debts, huge debts that I'm forced to pay. That I'm forced to pay. Do you think there was mismanagement? <laughs> Maybe the that would be uh, your general should come in and take a look or something. Well, you have, you're having an audit done. I am. Yeah. Yes. I am. There's an audit that's that's scheduled in in April, and the state is doing a, a well. They do a, a, a an audit every time there's a new sheriff, but it's not a forensic audit. But uh, McSoley and McCoy are coming in sometime in April. I talked to the auditor of accounts a couple days ago, and uh, he said that uh, it looks like about April they'll start auditing the books. And so that that uh, I don't know what's what what will become of that. I don't I don't want to make any disparaging remarks, but I can tell you that uh, I'm not comfortable with what was done before my tenure. Right. I want to believe if if Chair Bonner was re-elected, things would have continued on and not hit this, you hit some kind of problem. Well, I, I, I had a, a couple of minutes to spend with uh, the ex-sheriff's uh, accountant before she headed for the bunker. And I said, just how, how, how bad are we? How, how are we situated? And she said, well, as long as the contract money comes in, we're above water. Well, immediately I thought to myself, what, you know, what, what, what? Because I thought I was moving into this posh job. I thought this was going to be, you know, my retirement job. I, I, didn't, I didn't anticipate, I didn't buy into this. I fell into this. And after, after about two weeks in there, I realized just how, how much trouble we were in because of what we had in the pot, uh, what we had for bills, what we had for people, because everybody was abandoning ship. By the time I got there, there's virtually nobody there, even the, the clerical staff. One of the clerical staff took another job, and one went to the, another sheriff's department. So there I was. There I am. Do you think that there were services meant to be, that were getting paid for, that weren't being rendered? Well, that, that was a moral issue that I decided with my lieutenant. I sat down and said, hey, listen. If we're not doing anything in a contract area, I'm not going to sign any, any invoices. So if you can supply a man in that, in that town with what you got, then, then I have no problem with it. But if you, if you are assigned, if a guy is assigned for two hours in, in whatever town, and he can't make it, I'm not signing on that. I mean, that's, that's just plain, that's thievery. And I wouldn't do it. But I'm not saying that wasn't happening because I don't know. That's quite a mouthful, isn't it? If you think it was a mouthful for you, it was a belly full for me, trust me. I whine a lot to Steve. Steve works with me. And I whine, I whine a lot to Steve. I, and he tries to stay out of it, but I won't let him. I, you know, because as I said, my wife is in Arizona, and the only partner I got is my dog here. So I don't have anybody to, for a sounding board when I get home at the end of the day. I, and I have animals at home I've got to feed, and. Uh, I'm pretty well shot. I'm, I'm in bed at quarter of eight, you know, and I wasn't sleeping for the first three or four weeks anyway, maybe even a month and a half. I wasn't sleeping. I ended up going to the clinic to talk to the doctor. Hey, listen, I'm not sleeping. I'm looking at the ceiling for eight hours. She said, well, you're stressed to death. What do you, what, what's going on? I said, you have no idea. You have no idea. So. How do we increase the budget? Uh, you know, if, if I had the opportunity to go to every town meeting and ex express myself like this in every town meeting, I don't know as I'd have any contracts. But, yeah, you know, I hate to lose any contract, and that's why my guy is out there. He's running ragged, but he's a young man and he's ready to go. But the biggest problem is he's applied for employment in Montana, and he's the, one of the sharpest 
brightest little guys I've ever seen in my life. He's just, he's like that. Fresh out of the academy, works like a demon. And I said, why do you want to go play in the oil fields? <laughs> a lot of people think they, they envision Montana as this absolutely gorgeous mountainous ski slopes and, and the Yellowstone farm that they see on TV and all this stuff. Well, if you go to Montana, you've got two choices, the snow in the mountains or the oil fields. Flatter than a pancake, most of Montana. And I try to tell them that, but no, no, I want to travel. So, uh, and I know, despite the fact that I pay him, I pay him well, and uh, he gets every benefit that I can possibly give him. He's got the wanderlust. He's, you know, he's 22, 23 years old. He's ready to see the world. So what happens then? I've got no contracts if I don't have another man there. So I'll be writing letters to the different towns saying I've got nobody to operate in the contracts. So then what happens? The only contract I'll have is the court. So that means that I'll be, I'll be in the court, back in the court again, five days a week with my second in command. Uh, and uh, we have one other guy who, uh, who has been working there. And I hired one today. So that will account for jury days when we have to have more than two people. But our contract says you've got to have two people there for the entire, entire day. Even if there's no court, you've got to have two people there. So, Does and the legislature have anything to do with this, or can they? County government's a strange animal. I mean, you know yourself from reading in the paper that the, one, of the, one of the sheriffs up north, when he lost the election, he just uh, gave out $400,000, because that's what he had saved from all his contracts. He just put it in the, what we call the war chest. He put it in the war chest. And when he lost the election, he said, eh, and he passed it out, 400000 that was in the paper. Everybody knew that. And the sheriffs can do that. The sheriffs can do that. And, and yeah, who was right? And, and then, and then people, people say, well, why isn't there more uh, oversight by the legislature? Good question. Why isn't there more oversight? Well, the sheriff's department has quite a lobbying. And they don't want anybody playing in their contracts. Yes. So, Hi, Jesse. How are you? Hey, I'm, good. I'm Jesse. I'm the director of the Restorative Justice Center um, that serves Orange County, and we, we're here in Chelsea, too. And I see how, like, this is a big group of people from the community that's sitting here and has shown up. And I, you know, this isn't necessarily a question for you, George, but maybe an opportunity for you to hear, like, what are, you guys are all sitting here, and I'm curious what got you here? Like, what are your concerns? What are you feeling like you want and need as a community to feel safe and to feel like this is a place where um, you feel like, you know, your needs are getting met and you feel like you're in a, like a, a good, safe, just community? Um, what does George, you know, need to hear from you guys um, about that? I am. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Emily Newman, and I worked in the court for about 20 years. I worked with Bill Bonyak, the former sheriff, worked with George more than Bill Bonyak, actually in the court. And George is one of the finest gentlemen oh, make me blush. ever known. He's absolutely the correct person for this position. Integrity, honesty, anybody that came into that courthouse, he made them not so afraid, not so, when you come in there, it's a, it's a very stressful situation and you feel like it's the end of the earth. George, actually, I, I don't know what, if it's the right word, but he comforted these people. Yeah, yeah. He's very interested in the humanity of it. He's interested in the community, absolutely interested in your children, your husbands, your wives, everybody, everybody in the community. I really, I don't want to gush on. No, don't gush. But, <laughs> keep it going, keep it going. but I think this is absolutely the right choice, considering there are a lot of things that happened in previous years that are probably, that I know and other people know that will probably come to light eventually. Um, and it's nothing that I can really speak to now. I've been retired for quite a few years. 
the um, bottom line is George will do the best job for this county. Um, any sheriff besides Sheriff Kapoor was a wonderful sheriff. Yeah, he's a, kind of my mentor. He, yeah, yeah, he was, he was a good sheriff. But I really believe in George, and I think George needs support from the community, and he's really trying his very, very best to get this department up and running and, and sustainable. Okay. I think at least people I've talked to in the community that are concerned about this issue, and it's what you brought up, for years they've called the sheriff's department, someone's breaking into my house, there's someone rapping on my door, I'm all alone, like, there's someone at the parent-child center, like, snooping around. And the answer was always, nope, can't help you, call the state police. Um, I think people want, when they call the sheriff's department, and it's something, particularly something dangerous, that they get a response. Because otherwise, I think most people feel like, we've got to look to something else. What are we paying for? Yeah, I don't think anybody in this room would disagree with that statement. Right. And I mean, everybody wants unfortunately, to until we want to sign a contract with the sheriff's department for enough services so that that is available, like it used to be in the old days that we didn't have to pay for it. Right. Um, you know, other than our, out of our town taxes, what little bit goes to the county. Uh, yeah, Vermont's unique. I mean, it goes back to the 1800s. Almost every other state in the country, your county government is your government. It's not your town, it's your county. It's county highway departments, county sheriff departments. Um, Vermont, for whatever reason, in the 1800s thought that the town should be the entity. And uh, that's why we have town meetings, not county meetings. <laughs> uh, well, we do have county meetings, but uh, there, I don't know as I've ever seen more than half a dozen people at one. Uh, so, I, if I'm wrong, somebody speak up here, but I mean, my son has a business right on Main Street. I visit in there. Uh, four or five hours a week probably, just stop in. And I can sit there and I can watch the drug deals going down across the street. I've watched this for 25 years. Been in Will's store and look out the window and watch this shit going on. Nothing happens. I've sent photographs. I've called the Sheriff's Department. I've called the State Police. State Police's answer is, be an hour before we get there. You know what's going to happen, Bob. They're going to be long gone. And so until we as a, a county are going to start financing this department well, you know, they're, they're, with the funds that they need, if, we're if, not going to have a response. If you could get the legislature to say, listen, forget this contract issue. There's 400 bills in legislature, uh, you know this. There's 37 in the House of Representatives and only two we'll benefit either the courts, the law enforcement, or the victims. All the rest of them, let them go, give them immunity, do this, do that. But to his point, who pays for that? If, if you were to come and arrest the drug dealer, who runs him to the court? Is that again the sheriff's department? Who funds all the legal fees and all that stuff? Well, there are no legal fees per se. The, the uh, <coughs> county prosecutor would handle a case like that. If a deputy arrested somebody for a drug offense in downtown Chelsea, yeah. he just writes the case up uh, and it gets, it gets fed to the state's attorney's office. He gets a citation to appear. He comes in and gets arraigned. He pleads not guilty. He vanishes from the scene for about two or three weeks and comes back for another hearing. And maybe his public defender, if he's using a public defender, will uh, get it to either plead guilty and take a lesser offense or set up for a jury trial. But there's no cost. The only cost is if, say for instance, the state, in the state system that I worked in for years, if you were on days off and you got called into court, you got a minimum of four hours. So if you got called in to testify in Chelsea over a case that you happened to bump into, then you got paid four hours. And the same goes for us. If a deputy is on days off and he's, he's required to come into court 
then he's paid four hours. So that's your only, the only money that really gets expended on that. Now the sad part of this is, I don't like this audio-visual stuff. Now I don't know about you. You're in court quite a bit. You get a chance to see that. Steve's in court all the time. Now I can tell you that being arraigned in a correctional center, looking at a TV set, sitting there, you don't know what's happened to you. Em was talking about that, how you feel like you're, you're not even human anymore. And here's a judge on another screen talking to you, uh, you know, trying to get a plea and explaining to this, you know, explaining. And he can't even see the, uh, the affect of that person, either one of them. It's a rotten system, and it started with this COVID. And, and, and now we don't have hardly anybody coming into court. We're starting to get a little bit more now. But uh, arraignments used to be 15 or 17 people that all wander in. Now we have arraignments, we have eight or 10 people, two thirds of them don't show up. Right? Yeah, yeah, the end of the day. So I don't know what's happening, but there's really no expense on our behalf. Okay. But what if, in, in an ideal world, if the state of Vermont said, all right, we're, we're going to stop this contract business, and what's gonna happen is we're gonna, we're gonna increase the, the town's uh, uh, proportion of money that goes into the state. If they increase that so that your tax dollar went up, well, I don't know, let's just say a figure of $50 a year, which would be a lot of money. $50 a year went, went to the state and the state funded the Sheriff's Department. We did a budget and the budget came in at $750,000 or whatever it came in at, you, that was your budget and you worked with it. You answered all the calls in your county, period. You didn't have contracts. You didn't have a dispatcher saying, oh, sorry, you're not in our county. Sorry, you don't have our contract. We could get rid of that. Yeah. But you try to get a system like that through. It Adios. Sounds, sounds like what you need. Because yes, that's what we need. The policing you often get is, is like more punitive. Right. I'm going to have to watch my back going home tonight. Yeah, because they're going to they're have that traffic stop here, or they're, they're doing this, they're doing that. And when you need help, you can't get it. But is there a reason, going back to this drug thing, because I've heard this from like three different people, like Williamstown at a state level, there's been a, in Chelsea another incident. Yeah. Is there a reason the police wouldn't want to get involved? Is it just because they're not getting any money for it? Why, why no, would? No, that, I don't think money's the issue at all. Well, first off, cannabis is not legal. Yeah, but there's more, this was heavy drugs. We're yeah, talking heroin well, kind I, of I stuff. I know, my next door neighbor died last week. Yeah. yeah, but why wouldn't they, I mean, three different cases and the cops were like, we don't care. Yeah. Been going on for years, oh, I, right? I, I doubt they would say I don't care, but they could probably say, I'm sorry, I'm busy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what, what would, why would but they do that? Times have changed so, you know. When I worked, I, I worked in the Drug Enforcement Administration for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, our impetus was heavier drugs. You know, cocaine and, and on up. Uh, but once in a while, we would take marijuana. Uh, like, I, 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 uh, I got a field and a farm that had like 8,000 plants. This was back when nothing was legal. And, and so that was a pretty big thing. But, you know, nowadays, People are growing everywhere. And so, you know, the whole impetus on marijuana is gone. So now it's cocaine and fentanyl and all these things like that. Um, but but how, do you, how do you get to it? You gotta have a unit. You gotta have people that are on the inside. You gotta have a snitch. You gotta have, you know, it's not an easy system to get into for a road trooper particularly. If he hasn't got someone that's on the inside, hasn't got a snitch, it's pretty difficult to get into the drug culture. It's hard to believe, but I had a beard and a ponytail when I was in in 1972, right. wandering the streets. And it was a big deal to buy two ounces of, of pot from a bar or whatever. And we did it all the time. Yeah. But now imagine that today. The whole, our whole society has like evolved into this, well, it's okay now. So you wonder, in 10 years, is cocaine gonna be okay? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is fentanyl? Well, well, we'll have to watch fentanyl for a while. Yeah, but our whole the system. The legislature to legalize hallucinogenic mushrooms. <laughs> what the well, I, 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 don't know, I don't know what the future holds for us. All I know is that we're trying our best with what limited resources we have. And I'm not lying to you. Anything you, you can think of, I'm going to tell you right out. And I know a lot of sheriffs are going to be very disappointed that I'm here tonight talking. So it sounds like it basically it takes too much manpower and special techniques to maybe make a good case against these drugs. Well, put it this way, it takes some men. <clears throat> yeah. Some. Yeah, but this is at the state trooper level. This is not just you. Oh, this yeah. is Williamstown. This, this, you know, this is a big... No one's going to care. Yeah, it is. It's, 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 it's fun. 
That's right. I, I, I hate to tell you, but it's a sign of the times. And it's, I don't know what else we can do. Yes, ma'am. So, uh, it just, just that's why I'm Kate Willard and I'm Chelsea. Yeah. Um, it sounds like it's almost kind of this chicken and egg sort of thing. On the one hand, there's not enough funding to hire people, but then you also have the issue where there's nobody to hire. So it's, it's sort of like it's two almost conflicting problems. You have to solve them both. And um, I, I mean, I, I think one of the things you spoke to is you know, maybe it makes better to have some sort of central funding yeah. that comes into the sheriff's departments. Um, I don't know, to, in, instead of just the contracts. But it, it just seems like if, uh, how, which, which do you try to solve first? Or do you do them both at the same time? Well, put it this way. If I, if I hired a full-time officer today, full-time officer today, and, and I paid him, see, I paid him $24 an hour. And on top of that, of course, I have to pay Social Security, I have to pay FICA, I have to pay Workman's Comp, I have to pay all these things. So before I'm done, you know, I'm already up $45, $45 an hour for this man. Now, if I hire this man, my uh, income to pay the people that are existing would be right on the razor's edge. And I can't afford to operate on the razor's edge because once in a while, the oil man delivers and the gas man delivers and we need tires or you know something like that happens and if i'm running on the edge i mean everybody knows you need money to operate a business you need a cash flow i don't have a cash flow i got contracts coming in that barely cover what we need in wages and operating expenses right now and so it's i don't know i guess you call it a symbiotic relationship we both need to come up at the same time and how to do that is is the way i think but a lot of people don't want those contracts touched they don't want them touched because, as you know, the sheriff can cut 5% off every nickel he makes. A, do you understand what I just said? Yeah. 5% off every nickel he makes. So if he works, he works a road detail, and, and they're paying uh, anywhere from some places are $100, $125 an hour for a car to man. It just sounds to me like sheriff's departments like to have the autonomy because they can make decisions da -da. that may or may not be in the best interest of the people they're serving. There it is, right there. But like I say, I'll be hated tomorrow by half the same sheriffs. <laughs> How are the other counties doing? Well, there's one county that's suffering uh, considerably. I don't think it's as bad as me, but most of the other counties, uh, uh, when their sheriffs left, they not only had a good transition, so they knew which key went in which way and what passwords were which and why this is that. Uh, <laughs> the sheriffs left a good deal of money in their, in their general fund, in their war chest, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they had, operating, they had operating monies right there to work with. And so they weren't worried about their payroll. They weren't worried about uh, tires. They weren't worried about fuel oil or the electricity or anything like that. They didn't have that problem. But, and neither did I, I thought. I thought. That wasn't the case. Does Chelsea have a contract? Yes, it does. I think it's four hours a week, 16 hours a month. I should have brought that, uh, you know, I have a chart which would tell you, or I don't know if there's any, any interest anybody would have in anything like that, but it just, it shows the towns and exactly how many hours we put out in each town and what, they're, what they've allotted for monies and how much money is spent up to that day. And we do that, uh, Carla does that weekly. We get a, we get a, a weekly uh, up, update from the, the accountant so we know where we are. So I know if, if Chelsea is, is short two hours coming up on a month, I make sure that the man is doing his two hours in Chelsea. Williamstown is the next biggest contract we have. So uh, he, he spends a quite a bit of time in Williamstown because there's, uh, obviously there's more hours there. But I call it the State of the Union. During those two hours in Chelsea, what, what will he respond to? Everything. Absolutely everything during those two hours. That's two hours. I know in, in the past uh, we've had some pretty rough dispatchers. And uh, you, you didn't get always the greatest response. And I'm, I'm, some people have experienced that and were talking to me about that. And I know exactly what you're talking about. 
But I, you, I can assure you that when we start this telephone answering service, hopefully in a couple, three weeks with, uh, with one of the new gals we hired, uh, you'll have a different tone, guaranteed. Any? I just want to ask about the Child Advocacy Center again. Um, What's going to happen to that? Well, is there a full board still? There is no board for the center? Well, the state's attorney is ahead of that. Right. For the Child Advocacy Center, there is a board. Mm -hmm. It is ongoing. The Special Investigations Unit is connected through the Sheriff's Office. And that is where Safe Line supports any of the victims and the families of the victims. And that's my concern, is that that is not available at this time. That office is equipped very well with two-way mirrors and with rooms for conferences and for a place for the parents to be and a place for the child to be. And it all can be taped. So that office, I am very interested in seeing maintained because for the county, that's helpful to have it right here. We oftentimes walk straight from the Special Investigations Unit down to the court to apply for relief from abuse order, so for a protection order. And that's why SafeLine is very concerned if there's no Special Investigations Unit available here in the area, because I have great concern for what is happening currently to the victims and to the families. Well, is that building rented by one of those yes, entities? Yes, it is. The Child Advocacy Center and the SIU Center are both rented. Okay. So there's a source of income. Doesn't cover the, doesn't cover the building. Okay. That's one of the that reasons. That building was bought for a dollar. That's right. It's sure. sold for a dollar. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> No, you can't. No. No, and, and I agree. I was I was walking in there today, looking at it, and it's it's a it's a very nice little place. No pressure. Uh, but but and I remember in years past, and and not that long ago, people would come into the old jail to do restraining orders and stuff like that. We would meet in there, and it was certainly it was less comfortable and 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 you know whatever. But uh, if you can't afford it, you can't buy it. And we can't afford to keep the building going. I was talking to, uh, well, he was, he's on the board that owns the place, basically. He doesn't own it, but they have the right of first refusal. And he was telling me that the building back when he was uh, attached to the building was $12,000 a year to heat it. And that was years ago. So you can imagine what that building, I don't know when it was made, early 1900s probably. Uh, it, it is not an easy building to heat. Uh, electricity, of course, isn't that bad, but, but and it, it's just something that we can get along without. As a sheriff's department, we can use the, the old jailhouse and get along with it, and if SIU happens to move to Middlesex, maybe they'll rent another place, or maybe they'll rent this place, or maybe they'll own this place. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that we can't afford, we can't afford, continue to afford it. And so I talked to Dave Savage today. And I mentioned to Dave, I said, well, you know, I'd, I'd like to crawl off one of these that. And he said, well, what do you intend on doing? I said, I'd like to find a, you know, somebody who would be interested in it. And I mentioned, as the child, the people downstairs, the advocacy center, do you think they would be interested in buying it for a dollar? I don't know. But those are things that we're working out right now. And I know, because Safe Line is a wonderful thing. Because when they come, when they come onto, the, uh, onto the scene, they come on the telephone, they're terrified, they're crying, they're screaming. And, and we put them in touch with a safe line. A safe line meets them, and they, uh, you know, everything runs really smooth. They get them into court. They they follow them through the whole procedure, right down to the day that's all adjudicated and done. And no one's going to say that that uh, they're not valuable. No one's going to say that because they are valuable. It's just, can we, as a sheriff's department, can I, as a sheriff, afford that? If I had, if I had more people, and if, if I went to every town meeting and said, "Look, you're only you're giving us twelve thousand uh, dollars," you know, we really need sixteen thousand, or you know, you're paying twenty thousand, we really need twenty-five thousand, because you know, no one even planned on on uh, cost of living. 
Our budget was level funded from last year, level funded. That means whatever it was last year, eh, don't bother with it. It's good this year. And so that's what you get when you, if, you, if you're in a business and bread's costing you 10 cents a loaf, that's your profit. And the next year, you're not gonna change anything and your profit's down to five cents. You're not gonna be in business very long. And that's pretty much, they say the sheriff's department's a business. At least the diggers did. They said the sheriff's department's a business. Well, I would have to disagree with that, at least with Orange County, because it's no business. It's no business at all. You threw a number out, 700,000, I think you said. Is that, is that was, a that's realistic close. number to run Orange County Sheriff's Department? No. Of, what it is? I don't know. It's fine with, uh, with nobody there. 700,000 doesn't go very, it sounds like a huge figure. But after you start paying well, all the Randolph just turned down a million dollars to get theirs back up. Mm -hmm. Well, if you, you remember Chief Krakowicki, probably, I don't know, what, six, seven years ago? Mm -hmm. he, uh, he wanted, I think, I think he told me he wanted about a half a million. And, and so now, what are they looking for? I mean, I, and I understand inflation. But I, I wasn't the benefit of any inflation on my budget, because I got a level-funded budget. And let me tell you, they watch that budget. Your side judges, I know, uh, they've, been, they've been maligned, uh, and I, I don't think that's uh, very accurate, because they've been, they've been very good to me. Uh, they've been honest, and they've, they've been straightforward, and uh, they told me what I could do and what I couldn't do with my budget. And uh, like, you know, we're not allowed to, uh, the, the only people that can pay for a dispatcher is the sheriff. The county won't pay for it. But the county will pay for a clerk. The county will pay for a clerk, but not a dispatcher. So, and that's, that's, uh, that's a law, uh, Stovey, Vermont, Stovey Lamoille, where they said that the, the county couldn't pay for a dispatcher. If the county could pay for a dispatcher, my gosh, I'd have a dispatcher. And that was one of the reasons why our dispatchers, one of the reasons why our dispatchers quit, because they weren't being paid peanuts. And I do mean peanuts. They were afraid to lose those peanuts when I came on. If I could get them back. Is the problem with going to other towns and saying we have to increase the amount you pay in your contract for coverage, that, then that means property taxes go up? And is that the reason why you're not willing to do that? Oh, I'm willing to go to any town meeting there is. Right? You probably you can't hit everyone every on Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month or whatever it is. Right. And, and uh, you got to remember that most of, the, most of the budgets are done long before town meeting. Your, your town managers or whatever, they've got their budget all, it's all fixed in concrete pretty much. Uh, once in a while there's some, some surprises, i.e. Randolph. That was a, a big surprise. But uh, it's pretty hard to go to them and say, you know, at least give us inflationary, an inflationary rate. Just give us, you know, a couple percent even, even a couple percent. So you have to speak with those towns selectors? Yeah, here I am tonight. I'm going to, uh, I think it's Newberry tomorrow night or the night after. I, I forget, it's in my, it's in my, uh, my book at work. I, I live with that book. I don't have a wife. Well, I gotta have something. Well, if you want to invite those select boards here, maybe you could maybe do it at the Grange. I hope we have enough chairs, but uh, get everybody in the... Now remember now, everybody here is a taxpayer, myself included. Now, I don't know what you pay for taxes, but I know what I pay for taxes in the town of Orange. I live right on the Washington-Orange border, and I pay a lot of taxes. And this state is really, really rough on your own taxes. My house in Arizona cost me virtually nada. I got a brand new home there, it cost me a little over a thousand bucks a year. Arizona's a lot more friendly business. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You can deal with the coyotes, you're all set. <laughs> How you doing, Bill? I'm doing good. So the residents of Orange County, what can we do to help? Well, you know, the reason I like to go and talk is that a lot of people are, are under a lot of misconceptions. And, and if I could just break away from these misconceptions, uh, you know, that the reason why we're not functioning is that because I'm the Antichrist. That's the reason. 
Well, you know, that's... And if you pass it around, I mean, Hitler knew that. If you tell a lie long enough, it becomes a truth. So after, after you spread a rumor around long enough, uh, it suddenly becomes the truth for, for some people. I and, think, I mean, realistically, people have had no expectation that the sheriff's department would do anything. So you mm -hmm. only can go up from there. Kind of, <laughs> right. That's what people, people say. You don't have to go any further down. You can't go any further down. Well, that's what my wife said. Yeah. My wife said, you got to stick with it. Stick with it. Stick with it. They hired you, you stick with it. You stick with it. But boy, those first couple of weeks there, I, I began to wonder, uh, you know, I, I was certain I bought a pig and a poke. And uh, some of our people there at court don't understand that old Vermont lingo, pig in a boat. But, you know, I, I was really, mm, I said, what have I done? You know, I've been living in Arizona for, for years now, all winter long. And I said, well, you know, it's a great job, Mother. Um, you know, I, I'll be able to hack through winter. And I, got, I was able to hack through winter. But you know, I had a lot of bad days, and I have a lot of good days. Today was an excellent day, because I got to hire somebody. So, you know, we all have our good days and bad days. It just seems I have more bad days than good days. And, and you know, that's why I want people to understand and, and to know that uh, it's not all in my hands. It was, it, it's been, uh, the department has been evolving, whatever way you want to say, over the, over the, the last term of the last sheriff. So I had to, I inherited that. That's what I inherited. It's understood. I mean, we've had meetings and it's all about you can't get the sheriff to do anything, so there's no point in making laws that mm -hmm. we can't be enforced and we can't agree with that. So that's where we are. Well, the legislature this year is, is uh, the real, inc real incentive to put a, you know, a, a unit that would be watching what the sheriffs were doing. They want some sort of, what's the word I'm looking for, Steve? Oversight. oversight. They want some oversight on the sheriff's department. They don't want that. Yeah. They don't want that. So you don't realize we have all the oversight. We have our vote. Yes, yeah, so it's the same thing with your presidential you elections. Like you have the vote. Vote them out. If you, yeah, if you don't vote, then you have nothing to cry about. You don't vote. I, I think there's also sort of, well, at least for me, maybe, I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody, but just sort of a general, I, I, I don't really have an understanding for I don't even really have a very good understanding about how the courts work, which probably means I'm Never. fortunate that I haven't had to deal with it. But I think a lot of people have had interactions with, with the courts, or I mean, you have this general idea, but, or sheriff's departments, or any police departments for that matter, you know, how the funding works, what they do, what the expectations are. So I don't, I mean, I don't know, I guess maybe if there was a better understanding well, of let me just run general through. people. You know let me saying? just tell you a little bit about it. The state's attorney, he is a prosecutor, he's funded by the state of Vermont. Okay, he has a budget, and his budget also includes a deputy state's attorney. So that takes care of the prosecution. The inside of the building is all the county. The, the, state, the state has funded the, the county with a lot of this uh, electronic equipment. We have a five foot, two five foot or six foot screens in there. We have all kinds of electronics in there. And Steve is a wizard, a wizard with that. And why, how he does that and still has a head of hair, I have no idea. <laughs> he, he'll, he'll be madly typing and the judge will look over quickly and say, what, what's the address on that? Uh, what's this? And he's got to stop what he's doing, jump back two screens to figure out what this address is. And it goes like that all arraignment day, Wednesday. It's like that all the time. I don't know how he does it. But he's, he's paid by the county. All the people are paid by the county with the exception of Sam is, is Sam, Sam the state? state. Oh, your state too? State, yeah. Okay. Well, there are a couple of state employees there anyway. <laughs> So they're funded by the state. The county pays for uh, some of the building itself Please and some of, the, some of the electricity and stuff like that. So, uh, but it, it, it has changed so radically over the years. It used to be, I used to love arraignments. You just, I, I, was, I was meeting kids of the fathers that I'd arrested years ago. And, and you know, they'd, say, they'd say, see me at the door and they'd say, oh yeah, you arrested my father. 
you know, it's a small community, and I've been in this community for 51 years. And, you know, and, and the attorneys love to come here. No matter where the attorneys come from, they love to come to Chelsea. Because it is not like some of the other counties where you're simply a number. You know, up, up he goes with, his, with the, the public defender, sit back down, out the door they go. Over here, it, it's really, like M says, it's a kinder, gentler solution to their problems. And so it's Chelsea Court, I know they were talking about uh, dropping, getting rid of the Chelsea Court and switching it all down to White River Junction. Mm -hmm. And boy, the, the, the attorneys, uh, they didn't like that at all. Not at all, because they like Chelsea. They like Chelsea. Just, I don't care for that audio-visual where you don't have the affect of people, where you, where you don't, uh, you're just missing so much. It's really a shame. I was hoping that after COVID, that that would vanish, but it's hard to, it's hard to drop something, you know, because it, it is, it is a, it's a comfortable place for a judge when he's sitting in his home with his own little courtroom downstairs and he does everything by a computer. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy and it's, it's, it may be even uh, less costly than, you know, supplying with a car to drive to court. But I, I just think it misses so much. It just misses a lot. I, I love jury days. I love jury days. You get to meet all the juries. I get to talk to all the jurors. I get to explain to them why they can't go to Disneyland. Well, of course they can go to Disneyland. Just go down and see the clerk and she's gonna excuse you. You know what I mean? It's a great, a bailiff is really a great job. Bill. I guess the main thing I want to say is, um, you know, we support you. Mm -hmm. um, I supported you while you were in jail and, and, and encouraged you there and, and you <laughs> encouraged me. But uh, in coming here, we, I came because I have a heart for the first responders. And I guess part of my deal was with my heart because over the last uh, seven, eight years, I've uh, been a part of a group that did a lot to encourage the Sheriff's Department mm -hmm. and all the first responders, whether it be at the Tumbridge Fair, with providing them with sugar to keep them going, with the hot chocolates or mm -hmm. various things to uh, Patriots Day and having something here in the community for that day. And then I look around this room and I see people that I saw in the uh, ICP meetings pre-COVID over at the school, talking about that intelligence community mm -hmm. policing. Mm -hmm. And we heard so much about community support and how important the community was. But then we had an election and all those that I heard about community support and that, I feel like, I'll, I'll use the word bail. Mm -hmm. Try it. They uh, were more in service to a man than they were to a community. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, whatever we can do to help you give what you need, part of what you're going to need is, is going to be our patience. Because uh, this didn't happen overnight, this is not going to be fixed overnight, it's going to take a long haul. And, um, but if I can, know, Bill, if I can manage to pay my bills, huh? if I can manage to pay off the vendors that are expecting to be paid, I will consider myself a success. And that's a sad thing to say. I want to pay off the people. I don't like to see this is your second notice, and it's a four thousand dollar bill. I guess what the main thing is, as was said long ago, just shoot straight with the community. Mm -hmm. shoot, shoot straight with the people. Let us know where you stand. Uh, with, without any promises, and uh, I saw during that uh, ICP group, I saw a group that was committed, actually went to, uh, a number of us went to the side judges on behalf of the sheriff at that point, and others uh, to stand by right. the department. And uh, that's not changed, though the sheriff has changed. Yeah. Well, the like I said, the, the side judges got beat up on that issue because it was publicized that it was their fault. Well, it really wasn't their fault. It was the fault of Stowe v. Lamoille, which said that counties were not going to pay for dispatching. That's all. That was decided many years ago in court. And so they were just following the law. But boy, they sure took a beating on that. They took an awful beating on that. It wasn't fair. 
and then and, and well, what are they going to do? Are they going to call the digger and say it's not fair? It's not fair. They don't do that. They don't do that. Do you finally have access to all of the computers and no. buildings and all the passwords and no. all of that? No. I've got a man that's working on the passwords now. I have an IT guy that's coming in and trying to figure out what the passwords are. I got a drawer full of keys. I have no idea where those keys go. No idea. No idea. We can't communicate from one building to the other unless we have text, because the phones. I had to shut off 26 lines. Most of those lines were charging, costing me $40 a month, and they weren't even employed by us. How's that for a thought? Have you, I'm sure you contacted Mr. Bondak and he I got two words. Good luck. I hate to shut this off, but I don't know what the weather is outdoors. It was raining when we came in. Well, if you call a dispatcher, they'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the Loyal County can tell us what it's doing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, listen, I, I appreciate the opportunity to come and talk. And I, I'm hoping that when, when somebody comes up and says that Contoy stole the fingerprint machine out of Randolph, I didn't. When they say that I'm the Antichrist, trust me, I wasn't, I am not the Antichrist. Strong Southern Baptist, by the way. You know that. So, uh, you know, go to the truth. Go to, you know, call me. If you hear these crazy things and ask me, is this true? Uh, you know, did the sheriff take two cars and just wander off with them? Never to be seen again. Things like that. I'll be glad to tell you. Yes? Is, is there a way that you can um, speak to whoever's dispatching now and give them your contact information because you know the only way I got a hold of you was through text. Yeah, well, text and on your Facebook. They don't, they don't provide you that information. I called them a half a dozen times. Well, we had a discussion on that very issue today, and that's when I informed Roger that uh, you know we're working on getting that girl online, so she's going to be answering the telephone, yeah. and that's going to be for for an eight-hour shift for her. So you know we're we're striving for that because as you know you know as well as I do it. People in the oil don't know what's going on in Tunbridge. Right. But it's, but, I mean, I don't, I don't really hold a lot of stock in Facebook. There's a lot of crack out there. Oh, yeah. So when I have to get a hold of the new sheriff through Facebook Messenger. Yeah, well, you know, actually, actually, uh, like I say, you know, we, we uh, transmit back and forth from the, the north, the, what we call the North Campus, uh, and the jailhouse by text, because we haven't got a telephone system that works there. And as, as soon as we bug out of there and go down, we're, we'll still be maintaining, pardon me, the, the big white building until we figure out exactly what we can do with it. But once we're down there, we're going to have four or five people in that building all during the day. At least four during the day. So, you know, there'll be someone to answer that phone. And if it's, if it's you know, my guy is in Williamstown and you had a problem in Chelsea, he'll be on his way. You know, that sort of thing. Here again. I'd like to mention, uh, you mentioned the Central Vermont Intelligence Base Releasing. Uh, I'm the administrator of that Facebook uh, site. And in the last two years since I've been the administrator of it, there's been five cases that have been solved through tips that have been provided through that site. Uh, I was also a founding member of the Orange County Community Watch Group. But I want to say the same thing to you people that I'm told everybody that got involved with that. If you want to get involved in a community watch program, you have to be prepared that the individual or individuals that you may be turning in could be your own son, your own daughter, your wife, your kids, your next door neighbor. And that's why very few people get involved in it. But they are a very effective community uh, resource. That's the word, community. That's the big word. That's the bad word that got me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, the last last case that was solved through through uh, Central Vermont was some of you may have known Nathan Hill, who just passed away. His bell was stolen off the top of his his house here in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. Through tips received through that, it was recovered in an antique shop in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it was recovered after he passed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, on behalf of Chelsea Grand members, thank you all for coming. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah, you know, I thought this was going to be a fish fry, me the trout. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were anti-Christ, then mind the trout. <laughs> <laughs> or are we fishing today? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it's wonderful that the community is getting together to uh, work on some of these things. And of course, I'll put in a plug for Chelsea Grange. We're always looking for members. We have regular members and we have associate members. If you feel you're too busy to come to meetings, we do have associate membership that anyone can have. So we won't take up your time tonight, but give me a call or give Isaac a call. He's our manager. Awful quiet manager. That's the best calling. I also like to say, if, if anyone has interest in, um, you know, working with um, people who've been harmed or who've caused harm through a restorative justice model, um, please come talk to me. We're right next to the court. We work closely with Stephen and the court and with um, officers on trying to address crime from a community level and having a community response to crime, um, holding people accountable and helping people make changes and giving people who've been harmed the support they need to be able to become whole again and move on. So if you're curious about that, I'd love to talk to you. We are also always looking for um, new volunteers and people who want to get involved um, from that angle. So. And the court's always open. The only time it's closed is for juvenile or mental health hearings, and so if you ever wondered, or wondered what's going on in there, come on in and sit down. Wednesday mornings. Wednesday morning. Might be healthy. Chelsea Grange will be having a drive through supper on the 25th. It will be Irish stew without the lamb on put because I don't care for lamb, I don't know about the price of lamb either. <laughs> and we'll have some Irish soda bread to go with it and cupcakes. So I think we'll be taking reservations so we know how much food to, to uh, get. So if you're interested, you if Isaac a call, you'll find it somewhere in town. Everybody knows it. What's its name? <laughs> And she knows her name. <laughs> She's very quiet, though. So, thank you well, all for coming. We